The internet is a big place, but it doesn't have to be scary. Like any quest, we have to make sure we're prepped and ready to explore before venturing into unknown territory. Welcome to How to Internet, a series brought to you by MediaWise and PBS Student Reporting Labs to help you learn all the skills that will guide you on your journey to becoming a good digital citizen. Have you ever gotten a weird text from an unknown phone number? You know, like someone saying good morning, trying to meet up, and saying they're your friend. Could this be someone you know, but whose number you've never saved? How embarrassing. Or is it something darker? Today, we're talking about scams. How to spot them, how to avoid them, and what to do if you find yourself in one. Did you know that teens actually fall for scams more often than our grandparents? According to this survey from Deloitte Accounting, an article from Vox, Gen Z Americans were three times more likely to get caught up in an online scam than older adults. Gen Z was also twice as likely to have a social media account hacked. And online scam victims under 20 years old lost an estimated $210 million in 2022. While it may seem like the world is just spinning faster and faster and a new type of scam is popping up every day, the solution is often the same, staying vigilant and using critical thinking skills. Now, when I say it feels like a new scam pops out out of nowhere, I'm not really exaggerating. In a world of bots and AI, we're being inundated. The first thing scammers might do is find a way to make you feel emotional, maybe surprise you or flatter you, anything to make you feel special. Those scammers want you to feel emotional so you don't think logically about your reaction. So if you suspect someone might be coming to you for shady reasons, the most important thing to do is to stay calm. If you find yourself feeling overwhelmed, just take a pause and a deep breath before making any decision. First, let's check out all the different types of tricks that you could fall for. There are gamer scams, romance scams, health scams, influencer scams, and the list goes on. One especially popular type of scam is called phishing. No, 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 not that sort of phishing. Phishing with a PH is when a scammer reaches out to you through email, text, or even a phone call to try and steal your passwords, account numbers, or social security number. It can often be really convincing too. That's why we put such an emphasis on never sharing your info with strangers. If a scammer successfully fished for your information, they might be able to access your email, social media accounts, or even affect your real life with access to your bank account. Along with messing with you themselves, scammers might also sell your info to other scammers. Quickly taking a situation from bad to worse. According to the Federal Trade Commission, aka the government entity that handles this kind of stuff, here are some common ways that they might try to reach out to you. They might say they've noticed some suspicious activity or login attempts, they haven't. Claim there's a problem with your account or your payment information, there isn't. Say you need to confirm some personal or financial information, you don't. Include an invoice you don't recognize, it's fake. Want you to click on a link to make a ping payment, but the link has malware. Say you're eligible to register for a government refund, it's a scam. Offer a coupon for free stuff. It's not. Here is the example that FTC uses on its site. This is an email that appears to be from Netflix asking someone to update their payment details. But see how the text says, hi dear? Why would Netflix be calling someone dear unless that's their actual name? Signed by my friends at Netflix? Yeah, right. Lastly, why do they spell center like that? That's British spelling and we're in the US. As sneaky as scammers might be, we can all work to outsmart them with some critical thinking. The first thing to know is that in general, you should never talk with anyone online that you don't know. But sometimes these conversations might be unavoidable. Here's the thing to remember. If you start to get uncomfortable, that might be a sign that you're about to be scammed. So end the conversation immediately. Now you know how to tell if you're potentially about to be scammed, but what can you actually do about it? When it's a text or a DM, you can just ignore and report it. Sometimes they'll reach out with really weird messages, like the one from the beginning of this video, just to see if your number is active. If you respond, they know that your number or account is active, so they can reach out with a worse scam later. Whatever you do, don't answer personal questions, give out sensitive info, and especially avoid sending any photos of yourself or anyone else. You never know what someone will do once they have sensitive information about you, so you need to be really careful about who you share that with. Most importantly, ask a trusted adult if you have any questions. If you are in any way suspicious, here are some questions to ask yourself. Is this person really who they say they are? Is there a number from an area you're familiar with? How long ago was their account made? If it's brand new with no followers, it might be fake. Are there weird letters or symbols in their messages? Do they have a strange sign off or call you an odd nickname? 
Could it be AI? Asking questions like these are really important to keep handy when you're being faced with any kind of misinformation. Here's an easy way to find out if someone is misleading you quickly, a reverse image search. This tool is especially useful if someone reaches out to you online who you don't know and is offering some kind of sale, influencer deal, or just wants to talk to you about some kind of get rich quick scheme. It's typically easier to do this on your computer, but just take a screenshot of the person you're talking to, throw it in your search engine, and ta-da! You've either confirmed the person you're investigating is a real person, or you just found out that someone is trying to scam you. That being said, a clear sign of a scam is when you're talking to someone, but they start to act weird or refuse to hop on a call or video with you and keep throwing excuses at you. All of these questions can be condensed into just three that are really easy to remember. One, who is behind the information? Two, what is the evidence? And three, what do other sources say? There are a few more things to make sure that you don't fall victim to a scam. Use security software and set automatic updates for it. This also goes for automatic security updates on your phone. Use multi-factor authentication on your accounts like a PIN, text, or thumbprint authentication. Make sure that you create a PIN, password, or security question that only you know. Back up your data onto a hard drive so you don't lose it in case something happens. Right now, there's not much uh, we as individuals can do to stop phishing. But here's what you can do if you think you've been a victim, according to the FTC. If you got a phishing email, forward it to the anti-phishing working group at reportphishing at apwg.org. Remember, it's phishing with a PH. If you got a phishing text message, report it to spam at 7726. Report the phishing attempt to the FTC at this website, reportfraud.ftc.gov. There you have it, how to successfully avoid scams and what to do if you get caught up in one. Our biggest piece of advice is to never talk to someone online that you don't know, to ignore texts or messages that come from people you don't recognize, and to always stay on your toes when it comes to giving out your personal information. Think of avoiding scams like protecting your house. It's never your fault if someone breaks in, but it sure helps a lot if you lock the door. Thanks for joining us. Don't forget to connect with us on social media for even more tips and tricks to help you take care of yourself online. Bye.